Hello and welcome to Nightside, North Andover Public Schools podcast. And my name is Dr. Greg Gilligan. I'm the superintendent of schools and I'm here with my co-host today, Dr. James Mealy. Welcome back, James. Glad to be here. We're thrilled to be here. We have a very special guest we're going to introduce in a second. Um, but before we do, just a couple updates. Um, we're just getting back from Thanksgiving recess. Um, it was a terrific break. I feel like it's really hard getting back this first day after the new year and after Thanksgiving back into the swing of things. But we've got a full uh, 20 days of school before uh, winter break. And so um, we are ready to go. Uh, it was exciting leading up to Thanksgiving. We had um, the big uh, football game versus Andover at Andover. Unfortunately, North Andover uh, did not prevail. They lost 27 to 13. Um, but it was a terrific event. Um, we had a couple seniors on the cheerleading squad. Um, a bunch of game, bunch of last game for seniors um, on the football team, and uh, unfortunately, we didn't prevail. So uh, that was Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. And uh, then Saturday, I had a chance to march with the town manager Melissa Murphy Rodriguez in the uh, parade. And uh, it was a great turnout, particularly the North End of a high school marching band and color guard were just outstanding as usual. Uh, how about you, Dr. Mealy? Any updates? So the most exciting people can really see the progress that's going on at the uh, middle school with the addition. Uh, the foundation's been poured. Uh, you can see it. You can see the outline of the building now. Um, and you'll start to see it go vertical uh, pretty soon. So that's exciting. Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing uh, how much work they've got done in such a short period of time. Where are we with the uh, new Kittredge School and that process with the Massachusetts School Building Authority? Moving right along in their timeline, uh, the step that we just took was to um, get approval for our choice of a OPM, that's the Owner's Project Manager. Um, we're using the same firm. We had uh, asked for them to approve. Uh, Colliers, who oversees the middle school project, and they were approved recently, and um, they're going to help us through the project uh, going forward. Awesome. Well, uh, really exciting times here in North Andover with those two projects um, really needed uh, for appropriate learning space uh, in the 21st century. All right. So without further ado, um, I, we have a very special guest here today. Uh, only, I'm excited. I'm excited, too. This is only our second guest of all time. Um, you know, as many of you, if you haven't tuned in yet, uh, the, the last one, check it out. We had student Ben Abbott, uh, senior at North End of a high school, uh, outstanding uh, first guest in the inaugural podcast, um, Nightside. But uh, today we have uh, someone equally as impressive, a uh, Hall of Famer. And when I say Hall of Famer... Um, we're talking about the North Andover School Committee Educator Hall of Fame. Uh, just a wonderful uh, educator over the years, a tremendous human being, and someone I've known a long time. Uh, I'd love to introduce to our audience today, uh, Miss Mary Julie Gregoire. Welcome, Mary Julie. Thank you. Thank you both. And, and thank you for inviting me to be here today. I really appreciate it. We're thrilled to have you. So uh, we have a series of questions for you to get to know you a little bit. Um, we know you, obviously, but for our listening audience, um, tell us a little bit about your journey. What made you want to become a teacher and who helped you become the best teacher you could be? So growing up, I had an aunt and uncle who were both teachers. Uh, my aunt was Judith Hilma, who's actually in the North Andover Teachers Hall of Fame. She taught elementary school in North Andover, and her husband was Dick Hilna, who was also on the school committee at some point in North Andover, and taught science in the Danvers Public Schools. So I was surrounded by teachers throughout my life, and then I went to North Andover High School, and I had some of the best teachers I think anybody could ever have. Um, one of my passions is reading. And my freshman year in North Andover, I had Tony Reynolds, who was inducted into the National uh, the Hall of Fame this year. And uh, he, he in, taught me how to really write and made my love of, of reading even better. And he also taught me how to do critical thinking skills. So when I became a teacher, I kind of modeled myself after him. He was also my student teacher advisor. And at one point, he was my boss. So he was my mentor basically throughout my career, and um, I loved he, his classes were basically discussion-oriented. He did the Socratic method, and everybody came to school knowing that they had to do the homework and be prepared, 
and participate in class. So he was my mentor, definitely. Yeah, a remarkable uh, individual and teacher. Um, for those who don't know, the North End of a School Committee Educator Hall of Fame uh, has been around now, I want to say almost 15 years, um, where they, usually it's typically one or two people each year are inducted, uh, and it's a unique event. Um, it's an opportunity to celebrate um, the folks uh, in North Andover made a difference in countless lives. And it's also a night we celebrate our teachers who have earned professional teaching status. So they've made it through three successful school years at North Andover, and they are back in their fourth year. And so it is really awesome to have it um, coupled with the Hall of Fame because we have the benefit of let, having the Hall of Famers and folks like yourself speak to our new teachers. Um, all right. So, Mary, I want to build on Dr. Gilligan's question, but before I do, <clears throat> you said you love reading. Do you have a favorite book? When I was a child, uh, my favorite book was Little Women. I don't know how many times I read it. Um, right now, I'm trying to think. I just read The Covenant of Water, and one of my favorite books was Cutting for Stone by the same author. And so I would say uh, Abraham Vergesi is the author, and both books were amazing. So I just loved the journey, uh, learning about different cultures, and there was a great deal of medicine in both of them. So I would say right now those are the two at the top of my list. I'll have to check them out. Okay, so what characteristics do you believe, in your experience, are necessary to make an effective educator? I would say one of the first things is connection. Uh, I think that it's really important for a teacher to know his or her students really well and uh, be able to teach according to their needs and be able to address their needs as time goes on. I think once you have that connection, students feel more comfortable in the classroom and you can get much more out of them. And as a teacher, it can direct your, your teaching uh, it's for them as well. One of the things I did in all my classes on the first week is had students write their story and share the story with the class. And I think that co coalesced the class, but it also gave me some background information on all the, all the students. And from that point on, it became much easier to teach and the class became a friendly environment. It's interesting you say that. One of the things <clears throat> that I had heard many years ago um, was a trainer talking about the golden rule, and everybody knows the golden rule, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. And too many educators seem to do that. This is how I learn, so this is how you're going to learn. And he said nowadays it's the platinum rule, do unto others as they would want done unto them. Mm -hmm. And you exemplified that. Thank you. I think it's so important to respect the students, and that respect then goes both ways. Then when you respect them, they respect you. And it, you don't need to go beyond that with rules and regulations because if you develop that atmosphere in the classroom, everything just kind of works. Thanks. Yeah, building off that a little bit, Mary, tell us a little bit about um, giving students voice. I think that's something that you've spoke about in the past, uh, and I think it really ties into that respect. Um, you know, as adults, as educators, um, I think we oftentimes learn just as much from the students as they learn from us. Mm -hmm. I agree. And I think giving them a voice like in a classroom where there's class discussions and students can interact with each other, not even be directed by the teacher, but respond to each other in a res respectful way, it helps them learn better and they appreciate each other more. Even students that are shy after a while, feel comfortable in that kind of environment to talk, and they start to blossom. So that, in a sense, that gives their voice. I also think writing gives voice. And when students write and write a lot, they learn their voice in writing, and they're able to express themselves in a much better way. And they are, the writing process also helps them, at a critical time in their life, come to terms with some of their own issues. Yeah, a really good point. Mary, I have a really a three-part question next building on this. So first, do you think students change over time? And if you do not, you know, why do you feel that way? And if yes, um, how do you think they've changed over the time period uh, compared to when you started 
um, in education. So do students change over time? I would say basically no. I think the people are people, students are students. The only thing that I have really seen a change in is um, their ability to connect with each other, not necessarily in a classroom situation. Um, usually if people were given downtown downtime in a classroom, they would talk to each other. And now I see, I, I teach an SAT class and I teach the college uh, essay writing class. And when we give them downtime, they take out their phones and they don't talk to each other. So that's the biggest thing that I, I, I was kind of shocked at that, that before it'd be like you'd see them all chattering and socializing, and that's not happening as, 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 it, is, as it was before. And that kind of really struck me. Yeah, so it really gets to the heart of um, what you're getting at here. Like, has technology been a good thing over time? Um, it, it, or is that a, you know, kind of the downside of interactions that you normally would see in the past? I think with anything, it has its pros and cons. I think there are definitely some real positive things about technology, but I think the socialization is a negative thing. I think that kids don't know how to relate to each other as well as they used to, and they're not having the conversations or the interactions, and I think that's sad. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I, I, I'd agree. I think, um, you know, it's not just kids. You know, you go out to a family dinner at a restaurant and, you know, people my age, I graduated high school and college and there was still no internet in use and we didn't have email. Yet I look around and you'll see a table, you know, two parents, two kids, and everyone's on their phone, uh, you know, not necessarily having those conversations, um, which are really important and important skills. Um, in life. Um, I'm not going to go on with more technology questions, but I am curious at the end to get your take on um, artificial intelligence and chat GBT. Um, but we'll hold off on that and we'll keep going here. Yeah, I do think it's a good observation that it's not just kids. We see everybody doing it. And those who complain about uh, how much time kids spend on their phones, if they were kids, if we had phones when they were kids, they'd be on them mm -hmm. as well. Um, so this next question probably ties to what we've been talking about. Do you have a particular success story that really stands out in your career with a student? I do. And, and this is something that it's, it's that karma, what goes around comes around. Um, when I was a young teacher a long time ago, um, I had a student in my class who was dealing with a lot of drug issues, psychological issues, um, mental health issues, and uh, I, cut, I befriended her, and um, she, she was in a lot of trouble in high school and later on, and in her 20s, she got her act together. Um, she became an occupational therapist, and every Christmas, I would, I actually, there was at one point that she was in a lot of danger, and I got her I helped her get out of it. And at every Christmas, I got a, f a Christmas card saying, um, I'm alive because of you. And so I have a daughter who has some, um, sh has some uh, is um, issues, disabilities. And this woman came to me and said, um, I would love to take on your daughter and help her. And so once a month, she comes, takes my daughter out. They do something um, with occupational therapy. They go bowling. They, they do things that involve my daughter um, doing, you know, like large uh, skills. And she has become her big sister. So now this person is in her 50s, and she runs a health clinic. And so I think she's amazing. And um, it just shows how people can change and just change the world. And she's doing that one day at a time. And what a great story of it paying back. Exactly. Yeah. And she couldn't be better to us. Nice. Yeah. And oftentimes you see in education um, students that come back who are successful. Um, they really talk about how a teacher made them feel. 
um, or the first teacher that believed in them. Mm-hmm. And um, it really goes a long way. Um, it's important work, and it, it can be challenging at times, um, but you're never truly alone. And so the ability to work with someone and say, this is important. I believe in you. You can do this. And uh, it's got to be really rewarding when they come back and, you know, pay it forward like that. Right. right. Well, it kind of connects to education when we always talk about learning more from our mistakes than our, our failures and our successes mm-hmm. and that you appreciate so much more once you do get it right because you know what it's like to have it be wrong. Right, right. And I think that's, that can make all the difference in the world in changing a person's life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, we're always, I think the craft of teaching is such that we're always trying to improve education. So we're always looking to uh, get better at how we educate our students. And so, from Mary, from your years of experience, is there anything that you would love to see schools do that you do not see happening now? Uh, I... I guess maybe going back to the technology, maybe having more time together in a classroom, probing ideas as a group as opposed to working on computers. Like I think maybe there's a little too much reliance on technology and there needs to be more uh, personal connection. That's, that would be the only thing that I would say is different. Yeah. Um, good answer there. Um, and as we think about that, I oftentimes think about, you know, um, we want to teach kids always how to think, not what to think, and to think critically, to be able to communicate and collaborate and be creative and challenge yourself. Um, But as I think about um, technology, um, I think about, for example, news. And where do students get news? Now, when I was in high school, I used to watch every night, Nightline, Mm -hmm. Ted Koppel, 11.35 to 12.05 a.m., you know, and you got your news through the big major stations. And I think one of the challenges for us in education now moving forward is really teaching kids about what are the sources and how do you tell what's a, you know, a primary source versus what's a valid source. Or should this information on Wikipedia, because it says so, does that make it true? Right. And going back to what you were saying earlier, the fact is that while – we as educators can learn from students um, as much as it makes us nervous as parents. They learn from each other. And the more opportunities you give them to do so, um, especially in the, the class um, setting, the better. Exactly. They just, um, I think they thrive when they learn from each other. And it means, it means so much more to them because they're a peer. Exactly. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. So switching gears now, Mary, um, how long have you been retired now? So I retired in 2015, okay. so eight years. Eight years. So what have you been doing since you retired? Uh, what do you do that's just for you, and what do you do that keeps you connected to the community? Okay, so um, e- even though I retired from North Andover, I'm still teaching in North Andover, Uh, The first summer that I retired, we started the college essay and application process as a summer course. And myself and Carrie Caffrey Zwingi and Meg Pinkston have been doing this every summer since 2015. And it's something that we love to do. And again, it's it's students writing their stories and to get into college and showing who they are as human beings to show colleges what they could do in their school and why they should be accepted into the school. That's been one of my passions. Um, I also started the SAT classes with Diane Bassett, who was a former math teacher and head of her department. And so we offer SAT prep classes at night um, four times a year in front before major SAT exams. So those are two of the things. And then I also started teaching at North Shore Community College. And I just decided it would be fun to see a different level of, of students. And I've kind of fallen in love with that as well. Um, I've taught uh, public speaking, uh, Composition one and Composition two, in American literature in, in the college. And 
It's been great. A lot of times I have adults, even adults that are older than I am, which is, you know, pretty old, um, in the class. So it, it's, a, it's a whole mix of students from um, 19 to 70-something. And it's, it, it's great to see how they interact with each other as well. So, again, they're learning from each other's life experience. Um, I've also, they've started this early college program, and presently I'm teaching students from Danvers High School, uh, the public speaking, and they come to the college so that they get a, an idea of what a college campus is like and college classes are like. And they're able to, these are juniors, they're able to get college credits and so that by the time they graduate, they almost have a, a semester done in, in college. So it helps everybody. Uh, a lot of these kids are minorities, and it gives them a leg up. So that's what I've done professionally. Um, personally, I love to read. So for a while, I, I'm kind of a news junkie. And for a while, I was watching the news every morning when I would get up, and it's not that great. So um, I started read I, at one hour every morning. I read f for pleasure, and it kind of just sets off my day, which has been terrific. I also have um, grandchildren. And uh, in fact, I had them this morning. And I have one and a half year old Ben and three and a half year old Jack. And they're kind of the loves of my life. And I, um, I enjoy being with them as well. So those are my passions. So it begs the question what are they going to do? They, so the three and a half, you said? What do they call you? Uh, so I'm Nan. I had um, my mother was Nana. And I, I could never be my mother. So I'm <laughs> Nan. Nice. Really nice. Um, I just I so I have two grandchildren now myself, <clears throat> and I was going to be Papa, but Adeline, our oldest, um, said Pop Pop. So that's so who I'll be Pop. going forward, mm -hmm. Pop Pop. And you will love every minute of it. Yep. <laughs> well, all right, Pop Pop and Nan. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, Doctor Mealy and I will be doing this for many more years. I think mm -hmm. um, we've got a ways to go before we retire. Um, what advice do you have, um, A, uh, for folks like us in administration from y your perspective? Um, and then, B, I'm going to ask a little bit about, like, what advice would you give someone who was thinking about going into teaching? Okay. For, for the two of you, I, first of all, I've worked with both of you, and I admire you both so much. I think that the two of you make an unbelievable team. And you've led this district through COVID, through so many different things that have been so difficult the last few years. And I think you should be receiving so many accolades for all that you do. I also think both of you are people, people, and you reach out to people. And you've been, and I know personally about the people that you've been kind to and reached out to. And I think that is what makes a great school system. You know, you can have the ideas, you can have the programs, but you also need the personal touch, and both of you give that to the community. So I want to thank you both for what you do. Very kind words there, thank you, uh, Mary. Thank you. thank you so much. It um, means a lot. This is certainly a people business uh, that we're in. Um, and um, speaking of that, this business, though, you know, one of the trends that they're talking about is um, nationwide, we have less folks going into teaching or more folks that think they want to teach. They get involved in teaching and they're leaving the profession not to come back. Um, so you're hearing about teacher shortages across the United States. Um, you know, what advice would you have for somebody who th is thinking about becoming a teacher? I want to say, so many people in my, in my past have, have put down teachers or said, you know, that, oh, you're a teacher, you don't make a lot of money. Oh, you're a teacher, you don't work in the summers. Isn't your life easy? Oh, my, you get out at 2 o'clock. Oh, isn't that great? And I think you need to see the reality that teaching is a very difficult job. And you're not just teaching a subject. You're teaching human beings. You're giving them uh, models. You're reaching out to them in times of need. It's all-encompassing. And... But there's nothing better. And if I had to do it all over again, I would do the same thing because there's so much fulfillment in it. And I 
think the trend, I could be wrong, but I think the trend is for people to be appreciating teachers more than they've ever had, after, especially after COVID, when people saw what teachers actually do in a classroom, and they, and some people had to do it with their own children at home, and they saw that, that there's a new appreciation for teachers, I hope. And I think that the, our society needs to see that one of the best professions in the world is to be it, uh, is teaching, and what did what did Henry Adams say that a teacher affects eternity, and that's what a teacher does, and there is never a bad day. Uh, th there are bad days. There's never a boring day. Um, there's every day is different. It, it brings challenges. I would say the f good far outweighs the bad. And sometimes those bad days end up being really good days because of the way things turn out down the road. And when you have a, a career that's spanned a long time and you can walk and see people that have had you and you can talk about their lives and they want to talk to you, there's nothing more rewarding than that. And I don't know if other professions give that. So I would say... Um, be a teacher, and I would. My my daughter, one of my daughters, is a teacher. Loves teaching. Actually, got her doctorate in administration because she loved it so much. And um, she's taught in an inner city school, so she's you know seen it all. And she just feels that teaching is one of the most gratifying things that she could do. So I think people should know what they're getting into, but I also think that they should know that in the long run, it's the most rewarding profession you could be in. Well, I think you're preaching to the choir there. I mean, there is not a job um, in this world um, that's as exciting, I think, as teaching. Uh, it's something for sure different every day. Um, I think it really, for me anyway, and i let you talk, Jim, in a sec. It, I think, you know, being in education keeps you young. Mm -hmm. um, some days I think it can age you faster. Um, you know, talking about some of those more challenging days. But... Um, you know, nothing underscores uh, your point than just being at the Thanksgiving Day football game and seeing folks that I had that are now in their 40, you know, early 40s um, as a senior in high school back in 1999 or the year 2000. Um, you know, and the things that they remember um, might not necessarily be about World Civilizations One or, you know, the French Revolution, um, but it's how you made them feel as a person. And, uh, I think in North Andover, we're fortunate to have such a dedicated and talented teaching staff that are not only really experts in the content area and experts around teaching, but they care about our students, right? And it's about those relationships. Um, Dr. Mealy, any, any thoughts from you? Well, I'm not going to try to improve on <clears throat> what you guys have said. I want to thank Mary for being here today. Um, I, I speak for a lot of people when I say I love listening to Mary. Um, speak. Not only is her um, voice soothing, uh, but there's so much thought behind what she says. I always come away a better person um, having heard what she had to say. Um, and I'm glad people got the opportunity today um, to hear what we've heard over the years. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you for giving me this great opportunity. It's been wonderful to be with the both of you today. Mary, thank you for coming out this morning. Um, we are Let's see, we're heading up uh, on the half an hour here, Dr. Mealy. So uh, any parting words for the uh, Nightside podcast today, talking all things North Andover Public Schools? Um, usually we would just say what's coming up. Um, I think people are just kind of counting the days now until the break. Um, we got air in between seasons, um, and everyone's just kind of getting over Thanksgiving. That's always difficult. Um, and just looking forward to the, the winter break. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, I think folks are really looking forward to, uh, you know, the, the winter break and moving ahead. It's it always surprises me how quickly we go from Thanksgiving um, to the sales on the Friday and Cyber Monday. And next thing you know, it's the holidays uh, before you know it. But um, it's been uh, a really uh, terrific start to the school year. And... Um, that is it for Nightside. Uh, we'll be back next time with Dr. Gilligan, Dr. Mealy, and thank you, Mary Julie, for coming in today. Thank you again. Thank you.